How's it going everybody? My name is Dave Whipple and you're watching Bush Radical. About a week ago I posted a video about my first ever log cabin build. This video is going to be about our second log cabin build. Hope you enjoy it. So if you saw the first video, you're familiar with this cabin. This is the very first cabin that Brooke and I ever built. We built this in the summer of 2001 and we lived in it until Christmas of 2003. It was fun living in that little tiny cabin and very simple, but once our daughter was born, the three of us, it was just, it was too small. And we decided to upgrade in the summer of 2003 and build this cabin. This is right next door to the little cabin. Now this being interior Alaska, the ground where we had, it was permafrost, which means you dig down a couple feet and you run into frozen soil that never thaws out. So the ground's questionable. This material here is called Taipar. It, they use it all the time up there and it's for building roads. It's very, very cheap and you, uh, you can buy giant rolls of it for next to nothing. And this spans the, uh, the ground and, and helps the gravel not work its way into the soil. If you look up in the corner you can see an old bulldozer up there. We had a couple guys come out with a dump truck and a dozer and bring in these tailings. Now if you don't know what tailings are, tailings are from the gold days back in the 40s and 50s when they ran these massive dredges. These dredges would go through the valleys and basically tear up the, the bottom of the valley and make their own lake and they had these massive buckets and they just mine out the ground and all of this rock is just busted up rock from uh, the gold dredges and it's sold for, for building projects and it's called tailings. And this whole pad is, it was about 5,500 bucks. It's all made of tailings. And for the time that we had that pad until we started building, we were really spoiled because we'd never had such a wonderful place to park before. It was really something else. But uh, that summer, I had a little concrete construction business I ran from 2000 to 2006. So doing the post and pad foundation was very simple, very straightforward. I used uh, two by eights and I made a series of boxes, about 30 inches by 30 inches, about eight inches deep. And uh, that's the pad. And then if you look in the corner there, you see those plywood boxes. That's the post. Now, I built all of these posts so they would ultimately be the same height, even though the pads, they vary with the, the, the ground below it. I'm going around with a transit and a height stick here, checking all the heights. And this is the finished product after pouring those pads and the posts. Now they're all level on the top and ready to go. Don't forget to sign your work. Now the floor that we built for this is very fitting for a log cabin like this. It's got a laminated center beam that's three thicknesses of two by eight, and then the, the rim joist that goes all the way around the outside edge, it's three thicknesses of two by eight. I was really lucky that summer because having a small business, uh, my friend John Cassidy was working for me. So whenever we weren't doing concrete, uh, we would go work on the log house. And it's nice having a couple guys to help you with big logs like this. And with a three-sided log house like this, the logs are already milled top and bottom and inside. We would plane the inside with an electric hand planer and we would peel the outside with draw knives. And then just fiberglass sill seal insulation between the logs, logs screwed together, and it's basically like Lincoln logs. A couple guys working steady can do about a course in an hour. Now I was really lucky that summer because uh, about the middle of July my brother came up and Ryan worked with John and I doing concrete for the rest of the summer so having a three-man crew was was fantastic also having three guys to work well well we're not working here you know we're just we're having lunch here but having three guys to to work on a log cabin that's a real blessing because some of the 20-foot logs I'm guessing they're right up in the 300 pound range. They're kind of hairy to put up over your head. And there's a picture of Brooke and Belle. Now 
uh, it was a wonderful thinking that we were going to have space to kind of stretch out. Now, Ryan and I here, you can see we've got up over top of our heads with logs. And there's some windows in the background. Uh, Ryan is also a very accomplished builder. He's built several houses, and uh, he was fantastic help. If you look here, this is the first picture you see of the massive blue tarp. I bought a 40 by 60 blue tarp to cover the entire cabin project, and it rained all summer. It was just nothing but rain for months and months. And that blue tarp, we lived under that thing basically. That light colored log in the background, that log is notched every 16 inches on center with a skill saw. It's notched two inches deep so those floor joists, they sit on the log below it and they sit in that notch and they're nailed off. Very solid, very simple. There's another view of underneath the floor and you can see the floor joist hangers that we used on the beam side. So the four joists are held up by hangers on the beam side and they're held up by uh, notches on the log wall side. Pretty good system. And that log post that holds the whole thing up, it's plenty stout. Now once we had the second floor all up, we would take our logs and pull them up a couple two by four skids. You can see the skids are braced on the back side with another two by four. We'd slide these logs up and get them up on top of the second floor and just stack them up and stage them. Here's a picture of a pile of logs staged underneath that giant blue tarp. Now this pile of logs is a couple thousand pounds probably, but the floor underneath of it is rough cut 2 by 8 16 on center with only a 10 foot span. I'm sure that floor is more than adequate to hold that kind of a load. There's my old dog, Hooli. As soon as we had built something big enough for him to lay on, he'd lay on it. Not much of a guard dog, not much of a watchdog, more of a welcome mat, I suppose. And if you look behind Hooli, you can see the living room pitcher window in the background. Now that pitcher window we cut out because we had a nice little view of this valley. I mean, I don't know if you can see it. I don't think you can see it in this picture, but the pipeline runs through that valley. Beautiful view. Now about this time, we got the second story up, we built our own trusses, I didn't have any pictures of that unfortunately, and put the metal roof on, and at that point, John and Ryan both left to their respective other occupations. John worked as a recreation guide at Chena Hot Springs Resort, so he headed out there for the winter, and uh, Ryan headed back down to the States for the winter. So the rest of this project was just up, left up to me. I didn't have a ton left to do though. I poured a few pads along the front of the house and built this porch. It was going to be a covered porch. It took me another couple weeks to get that all dialed in. And you can see by the clothing I'm wearing, it's getting kind of chilly out. As you can see from this next picture, I also built a little room on the corner of the deck, kind of an Arctic entryway. And we had quite a bit of cedar shake shingles, those used cedar shakes we used on the little cabin. And that was a nice little accent. Nice little something to kind of set it off. We we're getting close. I ultimately put a wood stove in that little Arctic entryway. And if you look in this picture, I'm just laying down some bricks and in a little bed of mortar, something to set the stove on. You can see from this picture, Belle's big enough to be backpacked around now. I think she was probably ready to get out of that little cabin too. Be nice to have floor space when you're a toddler. I would like to have put her to work, but babies just aren't much good at anything and she wouldn't have been good help. Well, we got everything situated as much as we could and we actually moved into that house on Christmas Eve. We didn't have any major furniture or anything. We actually slept underneath that tree Christmas Eve. And the rest of that winter, we just worked on finishing out the house while living in it. And we got, you see that birch couch on the left-hand side? Brooke made that years and years ago. 
and we carried it around to all kinds of different adventures and it kind of been our family couch. There's a little kitchen table kind of facing the driveway. We got some books up. There's that picture window and if you look to the left you see a door way there. Uh, that door was built with the intention of having a deck. It'd be another year before we had one though. This is the kitchen area. If you looked out that window you could see our old cabin and we had a nice propane stove which was a big upgrade. We had a window by the sink, uh, new cabinets. It was nice. Another year later and Val would be big enough to help mom wash dishes. If you see that blue jug, that's uh, the very standard in interior Alaska for people who don't have running water. It's very common to have dry cabins in that part of the state. It was another year and a half later that our son Mick was born and he got to enjoy the deck and Belle got to pedal him around on the deck. I think we built the deck in the summer of 2005. And that's the story of our second log house. Much easier build being three-sided log and lots more room. We still had the little cabin. It was just right next door. We used it as kind of a guest house and people would visit. But uh, the new log cabin, it would be our home for several years to come after that. So between our first cabin build in 2001 and our large cabin build in 2003, this is pretty much the story of our first homestead. It was a great time. We learned a whole lot and a lot of good memories. Thank you guys so much for hanging out and watching this video. Hope it's been beneficial and I hope you've enjoyed it. Have a good one.